What's going on everybody? Mala here. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Welcome back. Hope you guys are doing awesome. So, let's do this. Alright, our last phone review was a $40 Bluetooth headphone and today we're kicking it up a notch, but not that much. We're looking at a $50 Pro headphone and it's supposed to be used for you know studio working for monitoring reference style headphones all that stuff these are the Mastrop and AKG M220 Pros the red version they are based on the quite established K240s from AKG which are studio monitoring headphones like professional headphones that do not break the bank because they cost around 60 bucks sometimes 70 so with the M220s you get a special design same quality a little bit of a different sound signature and all that paying 10 bucks less by my standards this makes the M220s definitely check in the box for budget friendly now these are a semi open pair of headphones. So bottom line is they leak sound, but as a bonus, you get stuff like a wider sound stage, which is a plus, especially compared to what would have been a closed version of these headphones, which funnily enough, I actually got to test because these guys right here are the HP 60 Mark II from Focusrite. Essentially, the same headphone, barring a couple of differences in sound signature, obviously, but it's basically a closed version of the M220s. And oh boy, does this semi-open thing play a difference. Because the overall experience with so much more room for the audio to breathe, oh, it's so pleasant. Much, much appreciated. When it comes to power on these guys, the M220s have an impedance of 55 ohms and a sensitivity of 91 dB, which translates to them being as efficient as a HD58X Jubilee. Either way, you are going to be able to power them even through a dongle on a smartphone that doesn't have a headphone jack and a crappy dongle at that, but you're going to be pushing your phone hard to make the most out of it. These definitely will benefit from any amp you can throw at them as long as the amp has a clean signal because that will affect your experience of listening to anything through them. Or you can scratch all that and just remove the foam that sits inside the ear cups because it's supposed to protect your ears from touching the driver walls, but they actually dampen quite a bit of the overall volume output. Uh, I would not recommend doing so and uh, we're gonna get to why. Now, since I'm talking about taking foams out and all that stuff, let's take a look at the build. It's nothing exceptional, but you're definitely not gonna look at it and say, oh boy, this is gonna break easily, isn't it? It does rattle a little bit if you really shake them, but you're probably not gonna be able to really shake them on your head. At least my neck doesn't allow me to, so don't worry about it. There is zero metal to be seen anywhere. Everything is made out of plastic with these headphones but that doesn't mean that they look or feel cheap. They pass a little bit of a serious kind of vibe, don't they? They look like they mean business, especially because of this little mini XLR connector on the left ear cup. This is not something you're gonna be finding on any ordinary headphones out there. This little connector right here makes these things look like super serious and definitely kind of signs off for the pro part in the name all by its own. They are very light and because of that they are quite comfortable and that's a merit of the overall headband design which is one of those you know self-adjusting strappy ones and they do feel sturdy enough. The cable is huge and it's, it's a good cable but it kinks and it's really hard to get these things straightened out afterwards. It terminates on one side in a 3.5 millimeter jack with the optional quarter inch adapter and on the other side the super special mini XLR connection which for the life of me, I could not tell you guys right now if this actually conveys any actual gain of quality to these headphones compared to if this was a 3.5 millimeter jack in the first place. But that that's that. Now the pads, let's say they're uh, basic. They're nothing to write home about. They're not exceptional and they're definitely not on the camp of they're gonna get on your nerves so much that you're gonna wanna rip them off and burn them to ashes. That, that's not gonna happen, probably. 
but even if you want to exchange them, at least it's easy to do so, because they are swappable and like just pull them off and put something else back on. And when you pull them off, you can also grab that little foam that we talked about before. The M220 can produce detail, balanced detail across all the frequencies. There is sound stage to be heard. Sound positioning isn't just like left and right and that's it. And it is quite flat. It is balanced, but quite stark a sound. And since it's a reference headphone, maybe that's exactly what it was supposed to sound like to begin with. That said, I have never worked in an audio studio before, so I was left wanting a little bit more low end, a little bit more bass. Actually, no, scratch that, that that's wrong. There is low end here to be heard. It just lacked a little bit of a punch, that extra oomph on the bass, you know? They would not be flat and stark headphones if they did, but it is something I would have liked to see. But the strongest characteristic of these headphones, the most predominant one, is the fact that they sound very dark. And this isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just how they sound. I tested them against every single headphone I have in the studio and as soon as you take anything else off your head and put them on, you can feel the sound getting darker and closer, like more intimate to you. And it's not that you're losing soundstage between them and other headphones necessarily, it's just that sound feels like it's closer to you. And uh, I'm aware that saying sound feels darker is like, you guys probably think I'm crazy, but let me try to explain as best I can. They produce sound in a more serious manner, like producing sound is their job, so they're focused on their job, they're not here to be cheerful, to be playful, while other headphones are more happy about doing what they love, which is producing sound. So it's the same song, same notes, same everything, but these guys are more serious about them and other headphones are happier about them. Uh, I really hope that made any sort of sense. Anyway, the foams. When you take them off, three things happen. One, the overall volume output does get louder. Two, they actually get a little less stressed out. They get a little bit more relaxed about their job. So they get a little less dark, a little more cheerful. Just, just a tiny little bit. But the third thing is that the highs get completely out of control, totally out of whack, harsh and completely unpleasant. This alone is enough for you guys to understand that the foams, yeah, uh, leave them there. <laughs> Use them as is out of the box. You're better off with that. So, at the end of the day, what to make of the M220s? What they are is exactly, precisely what they're supposed to be. They are flat, balanced, stark, dark as hell, monitoring headphones for professional work. These are reference style headphones that do not break the bank. For 50 bucks, it's like you're getting a very high quality blank sheet of paper where you can basically write anything on. By all means, EQ the hell out of these guys, and you're gonna have yourselves a very good sounding pair of headphones. Like, no questions asked. So, these guys, they're getting a thumbs up, and that's really it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, so thank you a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.